In every transformation, there exists the moment of awakening. The illusions fall, and you're left with delusion. The trickery disappears, and all that remains is the truth. Yes, every awakening begins with fundamental truths, which become the building blocks of a new world. Screw. This thing's gonna fall apart. <laughs> If we analyze the first steps of the great saints and the spiritual transformations which surrounded them, we will find this awakening. Men who came to the conclusion that all reality is transitory and that nothing of absolute solidity exists except of course. <laughs> um. Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of The Light Creature. I'm here with Filippo, and today we're at uh, Santuario di Montenero, up here in the mountains of Livorno. You can see around us, huge big monastery. We're heading down to Florence, and from Florence, we're gonna do a seven day walk all the way down to La Verna. So come with us, hope you guys enjoy the journey. Let's go. The weather is definitely not the best. It's overcast, and there's promise of rain, wind, I don't know what we're doing, but <laughs> what do you say, Filippo? We're gonna get rained on? No, 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 it's not much nicer to take a break. Yeah, because mom said she's praying for us that we'll have good weather, so we won't get bad weather, hopefully. Let's see. Even though it's a stormy day, from up here, Filippo says you have a beautiful view of the city of Livorno, close to the sea. And he's right, it's lovely. Now we're gonna go get the train from Livorno and from the train stop in Firenze, we're gonna start our walk. Look like a shepherd van, pastore. We've arrived in Florence, and we're headed to Basilica di Santa Croce, where is where the walk starts from Florence all the way down to La Verna. The Basilica di Santa Croce is the largest Franciscan church in the world, and it is also known as Italy's mausoleum. We're in it. <laughs> Thanks. The reason it's known as uh, Italy's mausoleum is because it has the remains of some of Italy's most revered citizens buried there. If you've never been to Florence, then this video will not do it justice. You need at least one or two days with a proper tour guide or a guidebook or more. As I always say, in Italy you could live a lifetime and not be acquainted with all the treasures that it has of culture and beauty. So, I hope someday for you to check it out yourselves. It is an amazing place and definitely worth a gander. Here we are at Basilica di Santa Croce. You might be familiar with this place if you've seen one of my earlier videos on visiting Florence, some of the highlights. If not, please check it out. It's a really good video. So yeah, we got our first stamp, and now we hit the trailhead. All right, let's go. What's nice about the walk is we get to walk right by the Arno River, which is known as the slow and lazy river. You can see it just moving peacefully along. It's quite a nice change from being in the middle of Florence City. Don't get me wrong, I love Florence, but I'm not a fan of chaos. And today, it's pretty chaotic. Weather seems to be holding up, which is great. Walking in the rain is no fun. And doing the walk at this time of the year on November is actually kind of a risky thing, but hey, it's happening. On today's trip, we're going to be doing 19 kilometers. We're going to be climbing about 450 meters and descending about 450 meters. Fairly easy one today. Should take us about four and a half hours, if not five. Depends on how fast we walk and how many rests we take. We're almost out of the city right now. What I'm looking forward to is seeing these beautiful late autumn colors. And as soon as we get out of the city and into the forest, I'm sure there's going to be a lot more that nature has to offer us. Screw! This thing's going to fall apart. 
<laughs> For any of you who are wanting to do this trail, these are the signs that you got to follow. When we were coming away from the river point, there were none on the whole river of the Arno. And when we strayed away from the river to try to find the path which led up here to the hills, it were, there weren't so many of these signs. So if you do consider doing this walk, I would suggest you get the guide, which is the Way of St. Francis by Cicerone. This brand has lots of different guides that you can do all around the world. But the nice thing about it is that between your phone, GPS, and between the signs and between the maps that it has on the actual guide, you will probably find the, the way a lot easier because there was a lot of guests working, a lot of searching this morning that we had to do. But now that we're on these trails, which are a little bit off into the mountain, it's much simpler because there's only one path to go by. And when there's a fork, it's usually got a sign on it. So that's just a tip for anyone who's interested in doing it. These parts here of the trail, I think are some of the best. Where you get to walk through these olive groves. Look at this wall, this path. So picturesque, so beautiful. Leaving the city behind. Starting to get a little bit more nature here. First uphill. Not bad. Starting to break a little bit of a sweat, but nothing like the summer. I kind of like the whole temperature that is going on. I mean, it's in November. I'm wearing a very light sweater. And so far, feeling great. And the place is looking beautiful. Despite the good shoes, Slippery. I found a way how to do it. You get a little low and it works much better. This is the lovely thing about these walks is just as, besides the views is just walking and all of a sudden you know a little guard tower. A miniature castle. Just hanging out, just sitting there. For us to enjoy. This walk was particularly just gorgeous with all the colors of autumn. I thought it was gonna have all the leaves already fallen by now, but looks like we have a late autumn. Ah. <laughs> Are you happy now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, Filippo, how I know this guy is, uh, we used to do volunteer work years ago and was now ex-Yugoslavia. After the war, we helped uh, war refugees while living in Croatia, going on different missions to Bosnia and Serbia. That's how I met him. We spent about two, two years on the field. Almost, yeah. So we met up after almost about 10 years, I think, since we've seen each other, or a little less. We decided to do the walk together. So, two old friendships and Getting to see each other again, that's pretty cool. And we got about seven days to catch up. Such is the way of the world, you can never know Just where to put all your faith, and how will it grow? Gonna rise up, burning black holes and dark memories On these roads. <laughs> these are the ones that I prefer. It's just so nice to be walking among these vineyards. The grapes are all picked. Nothing left for us. 
beautiful hills. Sun setting. Such is the passage of time, too fast to fall. And suddenly swallowed by signs, lo and behold. Gonna rise up, find my direction magnetically. So, we arrived at our destination for today. It's Ponta Sieve. It was a very strategical point at the time of the World War II. Not only, it was also an economical power, so the Allies bombed the place. And the medieval city, which was, was razed to the ground and then rebuilt. But today, Ponta Sieve is known for its artisanal leather. It's known for its olive oil, its Chianti wine, and for handmade pottery and glass. But we'll still give you a look around at the best sites. But first, we have to find a place to sleep. See, <laughs> see. Got our second stamp, and perhaps a place to sleep. The priest directed us after he gave us the stamp to cross the Arno River, and there's a convent where the nuns sometimes take in pilgrims. He recommended we go there and try it out. Now we could call, but we figured that they would have a little more pity on us if they saw us in person. So that's what we're gonna do. That's our plan. Let's see how it goes. In the end, we realized the convent was pretty far. This is Filippo's first day. We're not gonna walk all the way there. We called, and thank God we did, because they told us that there's no room at the inn. So we found ourselves another little delightful solution. Right down there. Yep. Right under the bridge. You ready to be a troll under the bridge? We're not sure if you go there, huh? You're not sure? <laughs> <laughs> He's not sure. I think it's a good spot. Yeah. We'll update you guys in a bit. In the end, after much debate, Filippo decided he did not want to sleep under the bridge. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he said it's too early for him. It is his first day and he was a bit sore and um, we don't want to wear him out and break him in too fast. He said he'll do a night in the tent. I didn't bring that tent for nothing. No. But uh, this kind of concludes uh, the first day of the walk. I would say we spent about uh, 10 euros on the train ticket to get from Livorno to Florence. Food, about 8 euros total for lunch and dinner. And then for the hostel here, 30 euros, which is the big hit. We rest up in the tent. We saved ourselves 30 euros. <laughs> but anyways, that's pretty much the breakdown of uh, the walk today. It was pretty easy, fairly easy. I wouldn't say it was too hard. It was very nice, very picturesque, very beautiful. If you're liking the content so far, uh, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting, which it really helps the channel or share it with anybody you think might enjoy it. And we'll see you all in the next episode. Hope this brought a smile, smile, smile. <laughs> Hope this brought a smile to your face. Godspeed, love you all. Ciao.